I'm Annette Batters, president of the National Farmers Union and really delighted to be here working with Patrick on my farm. Uh, this project near Salisbury in Wiltshire has been led by Richard Brooks who works for me and it's been I think fascinating and essential to work together across all sectors on a harmonised set of sustainable metrics. And obviously in my role as president of the National Farmers Union, representing some 50,000 farmers and growers across the country, I know I speak on their behalf saying that they are absolutely determined to be world leaders in climate friendly, sustainable farming. To be able to do more for biodiversity, to be able to do more for the environment, but I think most importantly of all, to make sure that the business case effectively is made for sustainable farming going forwards. And that isn't just about sustainable farming here in the UK. Patrick is absolutely right to say we need to be leading a harmonised global approach to sustainable agriculture and the metrics that underpin it. This is going to require innovation like never before, but I'm delighted that here in the UK, with the likes of Harper Adams and others, those innovations are coming through. So my farm here near Salisbury in South Wiltshire, where tenant farmers here is predominantly a grassland farm uh, with suckler cows, 100 suckler cows, um, focusing on, on Aberdeen Angus, both pedigree and Aberdeen Angus crosses. And at the moment, we're selling everything as strong stores. We've got a small flock of pedigree sheep and a, an arable rotation that sort of works around the farm and continually reinvesting in our grasslands, continually trying to lock down more carbon. What we are seeing by introducing new grass lays, by introducing more clover, we are locking down more nitrogen and we are lowering our fertilizer costs. And that for me, it is all about creating uh, this cycle whereby we can, we can lower our input costs, but we can be producing the same amount. So for me, it's essential that every cow has a live calf every year, that the health status is absolutely as A1 as it can ever be. Um, and it's in, in continual improvement. I think every farmer that I represent wants to leave their farm in a better state than when they found it. We're always, as farmers, learning new things. So I've been delighted to work alongside Richard looking at the harmonised sustainable metrics on this farm, how we really focus on the business case. All too often these things are driven by emotions and not by the science and the evidence that has got to underpin our sustainable farming future. We need to recognise that this is a massive time of change. It's a time of change and to a certain extent it's the opportunity that we make it in hosting the COP here in November in Glasgow, but also the UN Food Summit in the early autumn and the G7 Summit in Cornwall in June of this year. These are really, really important events to showcase to the world our commitment to carbon neutral food production. And we at the NFU laid down the gauntlet, if you like, to achieve net zero by 2040. And I think this is a very, very exciting time for agriculture. I absolutely believe this can be the decade of farmers. We are the one sector that, yes, we are a source of emissions, currently 10% here in the UK, but we are a sink, so we can do something about it. But back to the metrics again, it is really important that we own the evidence base for what we are doing here on farm, to look at where there are things that we can change and adapt, and also to look at how we can lead globally. I know very much from my time as a trustee of Farm Africa that this cannot just be a UK approach. It has to be an international approach to farm metrics. And we have to understand the international challenges and the intergenerational challenges that this will bring. So it needs leadership at the highest level. And of course, it's not just about food production. We absolutely want to be producing high quality, nutrient dense, affordable, healthy food for everyone. But this, I believe, is the time when farmers can really provide many more of the solutions that society needs with how they live their daily lives. Our total reliance on man-made fibres 
has to come to an end. As farmers, we can grow things in an ever more sustainable way on the earth. And of course, this is as much about fibers, this is about wool, this is about weaning ourselves off of those long-term plastics that never biodegrade and being able to grow things on the earth that do degrade. I've often used the opportunities around sheep's wool as tree guards, insulating buildings, enormous opportunity in, in agriculture as we go forwards. But it is all back to the evidence base. It is all back to leading what I believe is a global revolution. I think in all the engagement I've had on trade, uh, trade with the UK and the EU, trade with the UK and the rest of the world, we absolutely have to recognise that actually how we trade our agricultural products, how we trade agricultural commodities is fundamentally flawed. We really do need to lead a, a race to the top. Farmers can be and must be the solution to climate change. And in being the solution to climate change, bringing through those new innovations, those new technologies, the R&D that is coming online, we really, really can lead a, a reversal in the challenges that we have. But it needs everyone, everyone to believe in this project, to invest in this project for those changes to happen. So my final thoughts are that this has got to be an international focus. Um, this year sets out, I believe, the, the roadmap for how we lead a global change, how we own those harmonized sustainable metrics for how we farm, how we lead the charge for everybody actually believing and investing and driving sustainable food and farming forwards. And let's get closer to the food that we produce, the lives that we lead, and farmers provide that gateway of opportunity. So it's been my great privilege to work with Patrick on this project. Um, many other things that are going on at this moment in time, but I'm delighted to be here today and to have my farm involved and Richard's skill and expertise because we need to use every tool in the box here. We need to explore every single avenue uh, to drive sustainable food production forwards.